The acorns really are so good this year that I can't resist another batch. The wind is just bringing them down all the time from our tree. And this year, I think my second attempt is going to be acorn coffee. Hello, I'm Sally Pointer. Now we all know that at the end of a good hedge brothering session, what you really need is a sit down and a decent brew. Now I tend to go for tea most of the time, but there is a long tradition of making a coffee substitute out of acorns. It's often called ersatz coffee. It's naturally caffeine free and more importantly, coffee is expensive and acorns are free, especially at this time of year. Some of these really are enormous. Look at the size of that one compared to my thumb and I'm not a small person. I have never seen acorns quite this big. So this recipe is really very, very straightforward. I've had a quick look online to see what people suggest and it starts by boiling the acorns in their shells for about 20 minutes. So we'll stuff these in a pan, add some water, get them on the stove and go and have a cup of tea while that boils. So these have just gone on. The water's nice and clear at the moment. And as a general rule, if when you put your acorns under water and you float to the surface, they're the first ones to check for little holes or possible creatures. These are all sitting quite nicely, so I'm pretty sure that they are good acorns. We're going to boil this, so roughly 20 minutes seems to be what most places on the internet suggest. I'm expecting the water to go really dark tanniny brown, which means it'll be worth saving to use in things like dye baths. And then we'll shell them. So we'll turn that off and it should get a bit quieter, hopefully. Uh, water's not quite as brown as I anticipated, but I'm going to let the acorns cool down now in that water. Uh, this is leaching out quite a lot of the tannins, but also the tannins are coming from the shell as much as from the inside. So I'm going to be interested to see what the final acorn tastes like at this stage of things. I'm pretty lucky that our particular acorns, as well as being really big, really aren't that bitter to start with. I guess if your local acorns are really tannin rich, that maybe a slightly longer boil might not be a bad idea. But I'm doing this by the book or at least by the uh, assorted websites. 20 minutes is what they said. 20 minutes is what it's had. We'll cool this and then we'll get the shells off. I'm starting to peel these now. It's quite interesting. You can see a certain amount of fat on the side of the pan that's come out of the boiling uh, acorns. And the ones that I'm shelling now, and it's the usual thing, I'm giving them a quick whack with a rock and um, splitting them open and peeling them. These are very, very definitely cooked. I don't know if you can see how easily broken those are now and how sort of mealy and cooked they are. I did taste one just now and it's quite bitter. In fact, if anything, I would say it's more bitter tasting than the raw acorns. And I suppose that makes sense because the boiling has leached tannins out of the shell into the acorn meal. Usual thing, I'm doing this one-handed, so nothing's very uh, very efficient. But they're peeling easily enough, and I will just finish picking off the shells. I will get these into the bowl, and then we'll chop them and set them to dry before roasting. Well, that's a reasonable bowlful done. It's not quite all of them, but I'm running out of patience for this moment. I'm going to chuck these in the food processor, whiz them down quite finely and spread them out to dry. Whiz it down to quite a fine powder. I mean, think coffee grounds. You really want something that's similar in texture to quite fine coffee grounds. Then we're going to spread it out on a tray, give it a few days to dry out completely. Three days later, these are nice and dry and it's time to roast them. There's quite a lot of ways to do this. Some people put them on the stove top, some people put them in the oven. I'm gonna try putting them under the grill of my oven today. I'm hoping that that's gonna use a bit less energy than firing up the oven completely. So I'm just gonna put the whole pan into the uh, grill. Can you see the element? No, you can't see the element. Put the whole pan under the grill and I'll stir it until it's a nice dark coffee color, really. It's the first stir after um, two minutes and it's smelling quite nice. Sort of a slightly toffeed, nutty 
scent at the moment, but it's got a long way to go before it's properly brown. Another two or three minutes and there are starting to get little, almost charred looking bits, which I suppose they are really, can't be too far off. There's no doubt that this is roasting and it does smell really good. Quite hard to describe. There's all sorts of interesting notes to this, but yeah, it smells tasty. Now, I wonder if this is dark enough. I'm not actually a habitual coffee drinker, so I'm thinking maybe, oh, let's give it 10 more seconds and it may be a little light in the roast, but I think for a first go that'll do. I could always roast it a bit more. So a few more seconds and then we'll let it cool and we'll give it a go. Now that it's all been roasted, let me tip that under the light. The colour is pretty good, but can you see there's quite a lot of chunky bits still in it? So I've tipped it into my heaviest pestle and mortar. Nice big granite job. And I'm just going to give it a quick scrunching up just to make it nice and fine before we try it. Well, here it is. I've put it in a jam jar. I'm going to use a coffee scoop and a small cafetiere and I'm going to go for two of these topped up with just boiled water. And I suppose we let that brew for, um, oh, I don't know, three or four minutes. I don't drink coffee normally. How long do you normally let coffee boil for? Uh, yeah, brew that for a couple of minutes, splunge the top, and we'll see what we see. Let's have a sniff. Yeah, definitely toasty, definitely dark and roasty. Yeah, I suppose it's got coffee-ish notes. I'm not sure what to expect, really. Right, let's try this. Splunger goes in. Uh, press it down. It's got not anything like as much resistance as you normally get with real coffee, although maybe that last bit. Yeah, it's fighting back a little bit. Okay, I've chosen a nice light coloured mug so we can see what the colour's like. Well, it looks like coffee. What does it smell like? It smells, yeah, nutty, roasty, dark. Okay, I'm going in. Well, I wouldn't say that tastes like coffee, but I can see why people used it as a coffee equivalent. Do you know what? I quite like it. It's fairly bitter. I don't tend to like sweet things. If you're the sort of person who does, then the whole sugar and maybe milk thing may be the way forwards. In fact, I'm going to get a splash of milk now and we'll see what happens. OK, let's put a spot of milk in, just in the interest of experimentation. Again, not very much of it. Again, still looks like coffee. That's more to my palate, I think. No, I like this. It's got no caffeine in it. Uh, yeah, I think if you're a hardened coffee drinker, well, perhaps you'd have to try it and see. But that's definitely worth a go. I'm going to finish the batch of acorns that I boiled the other day. I got bored halfway through, so I put them in the freezer to hold them till I knew whether I liked this. But I think I do, and I think I will finish it off. Excellent. Yes, another thing to do with this year's Acorns, as it's a mast year, I'm going to top up my mug and I'm going to sit down and properly enjoy this. Happy hedge bothering.